This is the last section of Chapter 1 that we're going to work on before we start testing next week. Uh, we are focusing today on rational exponent equations. All right, so equations that have some kind of fraction exponent. Um, we're going to look at some equations that we call quadratic form. They're not technically quadratics, but they have kind of the same format. We can factor them kind of the same way we would factor a quadratic. Um, so that will be the focus of today's material. Do you guys remember when we said I'm taking, say, x to the 2 thirds? What does that 2 thirds power mean? So the 3 on the bottom means a cube root. The 2 on the top means we're squaring. Okay. So we are going to look at how do we undo, how do we solve for x when it has a fraction power like that. All right. So we said the top number is our power and the bottom number is our root. Remember, we can do it in either order. We can take and raise a to the nth power and then take the nth root, or we can take the nth root first and then raise it to a power. I typically will take the root first because it takes my number, it makes it get smaller, and then I can take that smaller number to a power. If I use the power first, I'm making my number get big, and then I have to try to find a root of it. It's just a little harder. Okay. So first step, we are going to isolate the term that has the rational exponent. Very similar to yesterday when we tried to isolate that square root symbol. Okay. Our second step, to undo a square root, we squared it. Well, to undo a fraction power, we're going to raise it to the reciprocal power. Our third step will be to decide, do we need a positive or negative? That happens when we're taking some kind of even root. And our last step, like yesterday, is to make sure we check those solutions. Okay, I'm going to pause this for a second and just give you time to write those down. Okay, so looking at our first one, we're saying x is being raised to a 3 halves power. That means we're trying to cube the x and square root it. We want to undo that. We want to do the reverse process. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. The reciprocal in this case would be 2 thirds. On the left side, the 3 halves and the 2 thirds power cancel each other out. Okay, Power to a power, we multiply 3 halves times 2 thirds just gets us a 1. So we have just a plain x on the left side. On the right side, we have two things to do to that 27. We have to square it and we have to cube root it. Okay, I'm going to do the root first. Now, notice that the root that I'm taking is an odd root, right? A cube root. Do I need plus and minus signs in front of a cube root? Okay, so I don't have to worry about that piece. The cube root of 27 is 3. So now I have x being 3. I then square it, and I end up with x equaling 9. Okay, checking our answer is the last step. So we plug that back in. So I'm going to check 9 to the 3 halves. It should equal 27. Well, a 3 halves power means I'm cubing and square rooting. So if I square root the 9, I get 3, and 3 cubed is 27. So it worked. So I would include 9 as a solution to that. What do you think we need to do on the next one? Isolate it, yep. The only thing being raised to that fraction power is the x. So I have to move that 6, I have to move that 3. I'm going to add 6 to the other side. I'm going to divide out the 3. And then I need to undo a 3 fourths power. So I need to raise to a 4 thirds power. What kind of root am I taking? I'm taking what? A cube root. Do I need the plus minus in front of a cube root? No? Okay. So I end up with x equaling. Now, can I do the cube root of 2? Does it come out nicely? No. Can I take 2 to the 4th power? I could. 2 to the 4th is 16. 
All right. So I could write this as the cube root of 16, but I wouldn't take it any further than that because there's no perfect cube. Sorry, there is a perfect cube in 16. What is it? What's the cube, the perfect cube in 16? 8 is the perfect cube. Its root is 2. All right. So if we want to break it down even further, we would end up with two cube roots of 2. I'd be okay with you leaving it as the cube root of 16. If it's a square root one that we've done a lot of, break it down. But most of the time they work out pretty nice. All right, our next one, what would be our first step? So what happens when I add that 3 fourths to the other side? What's 3 fourths minus a half? That'd be 3 fourths minus 2 fourths, which would give us 1 fourth. So we end up with x to the 2 thirds equaling 1 fourth. Okay, now I want to undo a 2 thirds power, so I'm going to do what? I'm going to use a 3 halves. Now, what kind of root am I taking? And as soon as you see that square root or any kind of even root, you have to remember those plus minus signs. Okay? So let's take the square root of 1 fourth. We'll figure out what that is, and then we will cube it as our last step. So square rooting a 1 gets us 1. Square rooting a 4 gets us 2. So the square root of 1 fourth would be 1 half. So x is going to be positive or negative 1 half cubed. Well, if I cube a positive, it stays positive. If I cube a negative, it's still negative. So I'm still going to get a positive and a negative out. And what happens when I cube a 1 and a 2? Cube the 1, we get 1. Cube the 2, we get 8. So we're ending up with a positive and a negative 1 8. Now we do have to check it, so we're going to plug that back in. Can I do both the positive and the negative all at the same time? What do you think? Yes? When I take a positive 1 8 and square it, it's still positive, right? When I take a negative 1 8 and square it, it's going to come out positive as well. So I'm going to get the same answer for both of them. So I'm going to just try them both at the same time. So if we cube root 1 8, we get a half, right? We're going backwards here. So we cube, the, cube root the 1 8, we're at plus minus 1 half. We square it, we're at 1 fourth. Is 1 fourth minus 3 fourths the same as negative 1 half? Okay. So I would include both of those in my answers. All right. How is this one different? There's parentheses. There's a quantity being raised to a fraction power. But everything on the left side is being raised to that power, right? It's all in parentheses. So I have to undo the power right away. All right, there's nothing to move. So to undo a three, a two-thirds, I need a three halves. All right. Now, what kind of root am I taking? Do I need plus and minus signs? Yes. Okay. So on the left, it cleans up to just being an x plus 5. On the right, I'm going to have plus and minus a square root of 4, and then that answer is going to get cubed. Okay, so square root of 4 is 2. If I cube a 2, I get 8. So this ends up being x plus 5 equals plus or minus 8. Then I can subtract the 5 over. And what do we end up with? What's negative 5 plus 8? 3, and negative 5 minus 8, negative 13. So we actually have two numbers that we're going to have to dump in and check. Okay? Let's have that side of the room. You guys check the 3. This side of the room, you guys check the negative 13.
So does the 3 work? If we plug a 3 and we have 8 to the 2 thirds, cube rooting an 8 gets me a 2, squaring it makes it a 4. That works. Over here, adding these two together, I have a negative 8. Cube rooting it is negative 2, but when I square it, it's still 4. So both of them work. I would include both in my answer. Questions on that type of problem? Figuring out how to undo a fraction exponent? We okay? Are we okay with knowing when we need the plus minus signs? Right? Anytime you're going to be taking an even root to solve it. Okay. The last chunk of questions are those types that I refer to as quadratic form. Meaning they're not quadratics. When you look at them, all right, I see x to the fourths, I see an x to the two thirds. They're not quadratics, but they have the same basic format. So we're going to look at them and try to factor them as if they were quadratics. We're just going to have different powers. So instead of having, say, x squared minus 5x plus 6, where I would factor that into x and x, right? I'd look at the, negative, the 6 and try to have something that multiplies to be 6, adds up to negative 5. Instead of having that, I'm going to have a higher power here. But what I still want to do is I want to split it in half. I want to put half of those powers in the first position and half of them in the second position. Okay? The other thing you want to watch for is the middle term, its power has to be half of the first term's power. So here I had a 4 and a 2. That 2 is half of 4. Here I have an x to the first. That's half of an x squared. Does that make sense? It has to fit that pattern to be in the quadratic form. All right, so splitting up an x to the fourth, what could we do? Exactly. x squared and x squared. All right, and then we still factor the same way. What multiplies to get me a negative 9 but adds up to negative 8? A negative 9, positive 1. Okay, can either of those be factored more? The one with the minus 9, yep, that's a difference of squares. So I can think of that as x plus 3 and x minus 3. This one is the sum of squares, which we can't factor with real numbers. We could factor with imaginary ones, but we'll go ahead and just leave it like this for now. What are my possible solutions? Okay. And then what about for this? If I try to solve x squared plus 1 equaling 0, that means x squared would have to be negative 1. And when I square it both sides, what happens? Square root of negative 1 is i. So I'm ending up with plus and minus i. Remember yesterday we talked about the power, or the highest power, the degree, tells us how many solutions we should get. So our highest power here is at x to the fourth. I should have four solutions, and I do. I have a positive and negative 3, and I have a positive and negative i. Okay? We do have to check those. So dumping the 3 and the negative 3. Notice in both places when I put that in for x, it's going to get raised to an even power. So it's not going to matter if it's positive or negative. Does that make sense? Okay. So if we put a 3 in there, what's 3 to the fourth? 81, okay, 3 squared is 9, 9 times the negative 8 would be negative 72, and if I subtract another 9, do I get 0? Okay, so these both work, okay? I can do the same thing by substituting those in and checking them, all right? To save time, we'll skip over that, but you can check those as well. So, our solution, plus minus 3, plus minus i. Do you know how to check an i raised to a power? Maybe we should look at that. If I take i and raise it to the second power, remember i is a square root of negative 1. So if I square it, I end up with the negative 1. Okay. So where the x to the second is, I'd have a negative 1. What happens if I take a negative 1 and square that? I get a positive one, which would be what my x to the fourth piece would turn into. Does that make sense? So I have one 
and then minus 8 times negative 1 would be actually adding 8. 1 plus 8 minus the 9 would get us 0. Okay? All right, so how would we factor the next one? All right, splitting up our x squareds again. What multiplies to be 6 and adds up to negative 5? Okay. Are either of those a nice difference of squares pattern? No. So we'll go ahead and solve it just like we did with the x squared plus 1. Set them equal to 0. That means x squared has to be a 3 or a 2. When I square root those, I'm going to end up with plus minus root 3 and plus minus root 4, or sorry, root 2. Can I take those and dump them back in? What happens if you take the square root of 3 and raise it to a fourth power? Raising it to a fourth power. Let's look at a different way. A square root symbol is the same as what fraction power? A one half. So we're really saying we have the square, sorry, we have three to the one half and then to the fourth. Power to a power, what do we do? We multiply them. What's one half times four? Two. So it ends up being three squared. So this piece here would become a nine. Yes? Um, dumping a square root of 3 in here and squaring it turns it back into a 3. 3 times 5 is 15. We end up with 9 minus 15 plus 6. Does that get me a 0? Okay. And the square root of 2 would work the same way. Okay? So both of those work. Our solutions are plus minus root 3 and plus minus root 2. I am kind of skimming over some of the checking pieces, but make sure you are checking your answers because we will come up across some extraneous ones today. All right. The next one looks more complicated. But the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, is the power of my middle term half of the power of my first term? Is this one-third half of two-thirds? Yes? If it is, then we can think of that in that quadratic form. We can try to split this up and factor it. An x to the 2 thirds, we would split into an x to the 1 third in each parenthesis. What about the 5 that's in front? How would I break that up? 5 and 1, yep. Okay. Think about what happens now when we do insides and outsides. Will I end up with a certain number of x to the one-thirds? Yes? No? Insides will get me x to the one-third pieces. Outside, same thing. So I am going to be able to get this 11x to the one-third. How am I going to split up the 2? Okay, a plus 1 here, a plus 2 here. Will that create an 11 in the middle? Okay, so we have it correctly factored. Our next step is to take each of those factors and set them equal to 0. Again, it looks more complicated, but the process is the same. Oops. All right, subtracting the 1 over. Dividing the 5 over. All right. We'll finish that one in a sec. On this one, I'm going to subtract a 2 over. And now they're just like the uh, questions we had in the previous page, right? How do we undo a 1 -third power? And be careful of saying times it. You're actually raising it to another power, right? We're raising it to the third power, the reciprocal power. 
So I'm going to have to cube both sides to undo a cube root. And what do I get on the left one? What's negative one-fifth when I cube it? Cube the one, cube the five. Okay. Negative one over 125. And over here, when I take negative two and cube it, I get negative eight. Okay. Now, checking those. We have 5 times something to the 2 thirds power plus 11 times something to the 1 third power plus 2 is supposed to be a 0. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump in both of those. We'll start with the easier one, negative 8. What happens when I take negative 8 and cube root it? Dealing with the cube root part of it. Cube root of negative 8, negative 2. Then I have to square it, makes it a 4 times the 5, makes that a 20. Okay. When I cube root the negative 8 here, I'm back to having a negative 2. Negative 2 times 11, adding a 2, does that get me to 0? Okay, so the negative 8 works. I'm going to do the same thing with the... Um, Negative 1 25th. Okay. Cube rooting it puts me back to what? A negative 1 5th. Yes? Negative 1 5th. If I square it. Negative 1 fifth squared becomes 1 over 25 times the 5 makes it 5 over 25. 5 over 25 would reduce to 1 fifth. Are you okay with that? All right. Cube rooting the negative 1 over 125 again gets me a negative 1 fifth. I'm timesing by 11, so I have negative 11 fifths. I'm adding 2, which is really 10 fifths, if I think in terms of common denominators. So 1 fifth minus 11 fifths puts me at negative 10 fifths. I'm adding 10 fifths, so I end up with a zero. So they do both work. They're not as fun to check, but they are checkable. All right. How about this one? Looks more complicated. The first question I said you should always ask yourself is, is the power of your middle term half the power of your first term. Is a square root the same as half of a 1? Yes? So it is fitting that same pattern. Our 2x, when we try to split it apart, we have to take that x to the first power and put half in each one. So we're going to have a 2x to the half. And we're going to have a 1x to the half. Checking your insides and outsides, will it get you the right kind of middle term? In the middle, we have a square root of x, right? Is x to the 1 half the same as the square root of x? So if you would prefer to write this as two, x, two square roots of x, you can do that as well. Now, we need to split up that negative 30 to try to create a, a negative 7 in the middle. Talk at your tables. How would we do that? Are you seeing it? How are we splitting it up? A 30 gets us. What are we using? A 5 and a 6? Okay. I want to put the 6 over here, correct? To make a 12 on the outsides. And if I put the 5 here, I need a negative 6. Which one should be the negative? The 6. All right. Double checking it. 
I get negative 12x to the 1 halves. And on the inside, I get positive 5x to the 1 halves, which gets me a negative 7x to the 1 halves. Okay? Setting them each equal to 0. Would you guys prefer to have it as a square root instead of a 1 half power? Is that easier for you? Doesn't matter. All right, so we have to solve both of those. On the left side, I'm going to have to subtract a 5, and then I'm going to have to divide out a 2. On the right side, I can just add a 6 over. And then how do we undo a square root? We square it. If I square both sides here, what do I end up with? I get x being 36. What about over here? Now, I want you to think about this for a sec. I said you always have to check your answers, right? So let's go ahead and check the 36 first. 2 times 36 is 72. Um, square root of 36 would be 6. 6 times 7 is 42. So I'm subtracting 42, and then I'm subtracting another 30. And I end up with 0. So the negative 6, or the 36 worked. Okay. If I do the same thing here, 2 times 25 fourths would be 50 fourths, or 25 halves. Okay, um, square rooting the 25 fourths gives me 5 halves, times the 7 gives me 35 halves, and then I have to subtract the 30. 25 minus 35 is negative 10 halves, negative 10 halves is negative 5, minus 30 doesn't get me a 0, right? So this is an extraneous one, it doesn't work. But I'm going to go back. The same question I asked you at the beginning of class today when we looked at that question from homework last night. Right here, before I squared both sides, I had the statement the square root of x equals a negative 5 halves. Can your square root equal a negative? No. So right there, we would have known that solution's not going to work. Okay? So my only answer on this one would be the 36. All right, we have two left. They look a little different again, but I want you to look at this. Pretend it was just something squared plus 7 times the same thing minus 18. Can you see that? I'm just taking that x plus 3 and I'm thinking of it just as a w. Okay. Does it fit the quadratic form? So could we factor it? All right. So I would have split the w squared into one in each. But instead of a w, what am I really working with? An x plus 3, right? So if I have x plus 3 and it's being squared, can I put one in each one? How do we get the negative 18 on the end and have it add up to a 7? How would we factor that? 9 and 2? With one of them being positive, one negative? Which one should be the positive? The 9? Yes? So if I think about checking those insides, outsides, Outsides, I've got a negative 2 of these x plus 3 pieces. Insides, I have a positive 9 of them. Can you see where I have 7 of them? Okay. Now, simplify. What's x plus 3 plus 9? All right. What's x plus 3 minus 2? 
So what are my possible solutions? Could I check those? Okay. Plugging in a negative 12. What's negative 12 plus 3? Negative 9 squared? It's 81. Okay. Put a negative 12 plus 3 on that negative 9 again. Times the 7 would be negative 63. And I'm supposed to then subtract 18. Does that get me to a 0? Yes? Yes? Yep. Okay. So the negative 12 works. Same thing. Plug a negative 1 in. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 squared. Okay. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 times 7. Sorry, this was supposed to be... No, it was a negative, wasn't it? It was a negative, sorry. All right. 4 plus 14 minus the 18. Does that one work? Yes. Okay. So they both work. All right, our last one. Is the power in the middle half the power of the first one? Okay. Instead of x squared and x to the first, we have negative powers. Doesn't matter. I can still split that up. So x to the negative 2, I'm going to break it up and say I'm going to have x to the negative 1 in each piece, in each factor. What gets me a negative 6 on the end and a negative 1 in the middle? Good? All right. Setting each of them equal to 0, x to the negative 1 equals a 3. Here, x to the negative 1 would have to equal a negative 2. What does x to the negative 1 mean? Exactly. 1 over x, right? x to a negative power means we have to flip it. So we're really saying 1 over x equals 3, and 1 over x equals a negative 2. How do we then solve for x? Can we multiply the x over to the 3? And then can we divide the 3 over? Yes? No? Okay. On this one... Multiply the x over and divide out the negative 2. Okay. Checking the 1 third. What's 1 third if I raise it to a negative power? It means I have to flip it, right? It becomes a 3. And 3 squared would be 9. Okay. Uh, the 1 third to a negative 1 power is going to turn it back into a 3. So I'm subtracting a 3, and then I'm subtracting a 6. Does that work? Okay. Putting a negative 1 half in, I'm going to flip it over, make it negative 2, and square it to 4. Put a negative 1 half in here, flip it over, it becomes a negative 2. I'm subtracting a negative 2. Does that work? 6 minus 6. Yes? Okay, so both of them work. All right, so you guys are going to do questions 31 to 57 odds and 111, 112, and 115. Again, I'm giving you odds so that you can check those answers. Make sure you have your work shown, though. 